Hi everybody, I'm Scott and this is a quick project to put this 100 amp power monitor module AC meter panel to use. It's from Banggood and it costs 1099 US. You can also get a 20 amp version for 973 US, but I went for the 100 amp, not that I'm going to be measuring anywhere near that, but I figured why not. Now I have my trusty old kilowatt meter here, which is, uh, I don't know, essential for DIY projects and stuff like this, but it, this uh, random meter has one advantage over the kilowatt in that it shows all these metrics at once, voltage, current, power, and energy. Whereas with the kilowatt, it does show more things like frequency and uh, apparent power and power factor, but you have to toggle through all of them. This I like because it shows them all at once. Then again, this is probably crap and won't work very well, and this has been trusty for many, many years. So I racked my basement trying to find something to put this in. I was going to put it in a UPS that didn't have current monitoring, but honestly, I wasn't going to use it that much. And what I really want is something to monitor the power that all these lights take up that I'm shooting this video with. And I have used the kilowatt meter in the past, but I don't want to dedicate it to that task. So I got this, uh, oh, screws just fell out of it. I got this box and cover plate at Home Depot. And initially I was going to, oh, I should show you the power meter, huh? I mean, you see it here in black and white, but there's nothing like seeing it in person. So it's got this toroidal coil for measuring current. Uh, nothing too fancy there, just two wires coming off of it. And the meter itself, which has a nice uh, LCD display. It's supposed to be backlit, I believe. And uh, wiring diagram, which is exceedingly simple. It just takes AC in and the coil gets hooked up to the other two terminals. And voila, this thing should measure current voltage, power and energy. So getting back to this box, my plan was to simply replace two of these receptacles with that. So I'd have two receptacles next to the monitor. But unfortunately I didn't bring this to Home Depot and it's not really gonna work out because it conflicts with the two screw holes. And also I had this the wrong way around, but if it went that way, you also can't get it past these. And these pillars are for mounting a receptacle to like so which is great, except that, and I could cut them out to put this meter here, but it would still conflict these two pillars which are used to hold the cover on. And if I moved to the side too much more, I wouldn't be able to fit a receptacle in there. So I'm gonna do something kind of stupid, which is to mount this to the back of the box. Now you think, if I put it on the floor like this, and it's gonna have a cord coming out of it for power, that's kind of a bad idea. But it has these tabs on the side, I figure I can attach those to some kind of support, maybe it's a piece of wood, and uh, this way the plugs would come in sideways, which I kind of like better than coming in the top, and I could see the meter on the back. And there we go, that's how to put this thing together, sort of. It was a much tighter fit than I'd hoped. I mean, I knew there'd be very little clearance between the box down there and, uh, and the receptacle, so I tried to keep the wiring as flat and neat as possible, but um, yeah, I mean, it should all go together just fine once I screw it down. So uh, while it's open and really dangerous, I want to uh, test it out. All 
All right, 121 volts, 0 0.04 amps, which is probably this device itself using that power. Cool. And it's backlit a, uh, a blue color. A little hard to see there, but it's got a nice backlight to it. Very visible. I mean, very uh, contrasty display, even though it's a basic uh, LCD, like old-fashioned type. But very readable, which is a good thing. So, yeah, I guess I'll button this thing up and we'll check it out more thoroughly. All right, now I just want to check out the accuracy of this meter, at least as compared to my kilowatt meter, which, I mean, historically, I've seen to be pretty accurate. Like, it matches multimeter readings and related stuff. So, kilowatt meter is saying 121.7 volts. This is saying 121. I mean, it should be saying 122 if it's rounding up, but it's probably not. So, that's fine. I'm, I'm willing to go with that. Uh, as far as amps, 0 0.04 amps, 0 0.04 amps, that's cool. Uh, power, 0 watts, and 0 watts. So, so far, so good. So, I'm going to just uh, get my trusty old heat gun here. Plug it into this box. And again, I'm probably going to mount this um, sideways or vertically or something. I don't know. I don't really know. This is more for demonstration about how this works than any kind of real practical solution for me. But, uh, yeah, go with that. So let's see if that's visible on camera. It sure is. So let's see how many watts this uses. On low, it's using... On low, it's using 570, almost 600 watts, according to the kilowatt meter. But... This meter is only reading 101 watts. That's odd. And current-wise, this is also reading low. Hmm. Interesting. And I've seen a little bit of voltage drop. Let's see if I see it on both of these. Yeah, the voltage... Yeah, I mean, the voltage drop was accurate within uh, about a volt of each other. I'm willing to bet the kilowatt meter is correct, because this heat gun does get very hot, so it's not using 100 watts at that setting, I can guarantee that. Yeah, this is rated at 1,200 watts on its max setting. Which, I guess, uh, let me put it on watts, and let's throw up to the max. Oh, now it's reading the correct watts, because the decimal point went away. I think it's trying to show kilowatts so that's about right but then in low power this is only measuring 101.9 watts it should be 570 so i'm not really sure what's going on there and the amperage is completely wrong but here the amperage is probably just about right yeah huh. well i wonder how it's limiting the heat that could be what's going on. It could be tricking the meter. But not, like I said, my trusty kilowatt meter. All right, I'm going to try this. This is a halogen light bulb. It's a straight resistive load. It's uh, 250 watts. So it should measure just about that. I'm going to keep the light out of the shot so it doesn't completely ruin everything with its brightness. And it's off right now. And I'm going to flip it on. And we're measuring 1.79 amps, 1.7978 on the kilowatt meter. That's just about perfect. And wattage, well, it's not a full 250 watt bulb, but these are pretty much in agreement. I mean, close enough as far as margin of error goes. Well, there you go. Sticking a power meter in the back of a receptacle block. I mean, this wasn't meant to be a comprehensive tutorial about how to do this. I was just sort of see how this meter works. And uh, it does, kind of. I mean, I guess it depends on the load. Backlight button. All right, that's cool. So, pretty nice unit. I'll test it more thoroughly. I guess it remains to be seen really how accurate it is. And of course, its longevity is an issue too. And so, only time will tell, obviously, so we won't cover that in this video. But for now, at least I have a useful four receptacle block here on a decent nine foot cord. Hooray!